Hey guys, my name is Ravish and welcome back to Logic Ops Lab. Now, today's session of Let's Talk DevOps is dedicated to one very important video that you need to know when, if, even if you are a developer or you are a DevOps. So the topic for today is 5 Deployment Best Practices. So deployment best practices means the best practices that you can indulge in your software development life cycle whenever you do a release, whenever you give uh, release the product to the market and everyone starts using it these are the five practices that you need to follow so without further ado let's get started so the first best practice is checklist for deployments now there is a checklist what what do we mean by this checklist now checklist is something that contains all the information that is about to go in the release now your release can be of one week your release can be of two weeks your release can be a monthly release now you have to prepare a checklist for that in that checklist you have to write everything that is needed for that deployment to be in the production environment now this can be anything for example there could be a list of all those defects all those bugs or all those enhancements that are created on jira and you have to prepare an excel for that okay this is this is the code that is going in this release so that could be one thing or you have to check whether you have to disable some kind of nodes before the before the production or you have to enable some node after the production or there is some firewall issue that needs to be open or there could be a server that needs to be open at the time of production but it has to be off before after after the production happens so you have to prepare a checklist for that in which you write everything that is needed for the for the production deployment so that's the first best practice that you need to follow the second best practice is setting up the alerts. Now, it includes deployment notification that the deployment have, that the deployment has started, that de the deployment has, uh, is finished or it has stuck somewhere or failed. Sometimes what happens is uh, you do a deployment and, and we know that deployment could be a very daunting and a very boring process. But, and it sometimes makes it hard to track all those deployment that is all those, yeah, all those deployment that is happening over it. And almost, uh, uh, as per my experience, almost all the CI tools, all the continuous integration has tools, has this ability like Jenkins, uh, TeamCity, Bamboo, Circle CI, and many others that can be clubbed with Slack. Slack is another uh, another app through which you can get the notification, or Microsoft Teams, you can club it with that, or there are multiple of softwares that are available to get the get the alerts, get the notification, and if, if, if your deployment is happening over AWS, you can clear alert alert for that in, in in Azure. There are alerts for that. So it tells you what is happening in the deployment. So if your deployment is successful, then it's great. And sometimes what happens is it gets stuck somewhere or it fails. You will get a notification and you will keep start working on that. So that is one of the most best practice that setting up the alerts. You have to set up the alerts for whatever is happening in your deployment process. So this is the second thing that you need to follow. So the third thing, third best practice that you need to follow is test, test and test everything before the final deployment. Why? Because we all know that agile deployment has dramatically improved our deployment processes these days. Okay. So by focusing on smaller chunks, what we can do is we can do frequent deployments and new new code changes when, when, we, when the code goes in a smaller chunks, it is less likely to make any kind of ruckus in, uh, in the production environment or in, a, or in any other of environment for that matter. So you can test your code in dev, you can test your code in stage, UAT, a pre-production environment or a staging environment. In that four environments, if you have tested your code and you have tested it thoroughly and there is no issue, then I think you are good to go for the production environment. So this is something that you need to know. Just, just make sure that the code that you are about to release has been tested thoroughly and all the test cases your uh, testers have written, if it's a web-based application, any sort of application, then all the lower environment has tested all those functionalities or bugs or enhancement. All right. So this is the third thing that you need to follow in the terms of deployment. Now the fourth thing, the fourth principle that you need to follow is always have a backup plan. Now, why do we need a backup plan? As we know that anything can go haywire in terms of deployment and you don't even know. It could be a network problem. It could be a code problem. It could be a server problem. It could be it could be anything. Your AWS code can go down. Your Azure can go down. Anything can go down. Anything can go haywire. So for that, you have to have a backup plan. So how does it affect your build? So what happens when your code does not work properly in the production server? What will you do? 
So if there is a bug in the production server, do you have a branching strategy for that? How, how would you how would you create a branch? How would you create a branch from uh, will you create a branch from dev? Will you create a branch from your release or the master branch? How will you do the patching and how will you release it to all the other branches? How will you down merge, back merge, forward merge, or cherry picking? How will you do it? So you have to have a backup plan for that. So these things you have to keep in mind. The branching strategies that you have used are up to the mark or not? Or let's say if everything has gone bad, you have to take in mind that. Is the previous release deployable? How about a rollback? So if you want to do a rollback, you have to have a plan for that, that whether my previous application, the previous state is easily deployable or not. So that's the fourth principle or the fourth practice that you need to follow in terms of deployment. The final and the one and one of the most important point or most important principle that you need to follow is, let, let us consider a deployment process. So what, what, what happens over there? You have a build process, you have an application uh, component configuration, you have an infrastructure configuration and this, these are one of those things that you have in a deployment process. So what you can do, just minimal human intervention. intervention. So this is the last point, minimal human intervention. So it means that you have to automate your build process. You, you have to uh, automate the IAAC which is infrastructure as a code. If you are trying to create a new service out of cloud formation or, or you are trying to do through ARM templates, BICEP or, or from AWS cloud formation, you have to automate everything because if there is a human intervention over there, anything can go wrong. So that is one another thing. Uh, so there is a very famous saying that uh, a good rule of thumb is everything that uh, everything that does not require human intervention is a candidate for automation. So this is something that you need to follow. Now, on adding to that is that continuous integration and deployment tools have dramatically improved the uh, de deployment process and we already know that. So manual deployment is kind of something that you have to avoid, uh, especially through multiple servers because anything can go wrong if you have 10 or hundreds of servers and it's a recipe for disaster in, in, in my mindset. So uh, one miss and the whole process that has to be has to be rolled back. Uh, in my personal experience that has happened quite sometimes uh, and I've heard about the case studies in which one small thing, one small miss, one small mistake has rolled back whole work suite and it has delayed the deployment process. And you do not want multiple versions of stuff rolling out and floating out in, in one server something else, second server something else. So this is something. And with CI CD tools like uh, Jenkins, Circle CI, Team City, Bamboo, CodeChip, and, and a lot, you are uh, you can do a centralized deployment. You can write a, a centralized uh, deployment script and tie it to one of those servers uh, and the application code repository. So what happens is whenever there is a developer who will merge the code into the branch, it will automatically get it will automatically get triggered and it will do the deployment. Okay. So these are the things that you need to know. So I think uh, we have discussed about the five points. This is the fifth one is the one of the most important ones. By the way, all of them are important. Uh, so you, these are the best practices, best principles that you need to follow in terms of uh, DevOps, in terms of deployment. So it is good for either develop, uh, development, dev guy or, or for a DevOps guy, you guys need to know. So uh, I hope you have liked the video guys. And if there is anything that you need to add, if there is anything that I have missed, feel free to down. Uh, comment uh, in the comment section and we would be uh, we would be replying to that all right so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one